are leaving this planet, and it stands in my heart sometimes when I look at the condition of our world. And I want to get closer to home, the United States of America. I know that we serve a living God, and he has left the greatest direction for us that we could possibly ever go through, which is the book of life. The situations that are happening in our society today, they are prophecies. Of God. As I was trying to listen to what the Word of God was saying this morning to me, and as I was trying to think of what I would speak to the listeners this morning, the Spirit just began to show me the condition of our society the condition of the whole world. And as I was turning the pages in the Holy Scripture, the Scriptures began to repeat themselves, which was bringing things back to our remembrance. The Word of God to bring all things back to our remembrance. So as I was going through the Old and the New Testament, I began to glance at some of the scriptures that was repeating themselves, which was, as I say, is a remembrance to us, and what the Lord was saying, that, that the whole world is off course. And as I turned on, I'm not a great avid of watching TV, but I do, I turn to the world news three or four times a week, or if someone tells me something is going on, I go to the world news so that I would know what to include in my prayers as I pray for the world, as I pray for society, as I pray for God's people. And it was very disheartening as I began to listen and watch the activity that is not only just happening in the United States of America, but all over the eastern part of the world as well. And as I began again to thumb through the pages of the Bible, everything that I read reminded me of what is happening in our society right now. So the Word of God, it's a cycle. The Word is for every generation that comes to this earth. There are so many things, and I don't have to remind you, but this is where my spirit and my heart is this morning, to talk about those things. Sometimes we don't talk about them because we are going through them ourselves. Some of the things are not so pleasant. Some of them are repulsive. Some of them are sad. And I find that very few things that are happening in society uh, that is in the Word of God is not that joy and that happiness that we are looking for. We have kind of merged into a place of hopelessness and sadness, but one of the principles of God is that we must be balanced, and I'm forever talking about skills. We must endure as much pain as we do pleasure in life. And it appears somewhere on that Richter scale that there is a lot of pain and displeasure that we're experiencing in time right now. And in my time, I have never witnessed this much happening all at once. So I wonder what does that mean to us? God is trying, the living God, Jesus Christ, is trying to show us something, and it appears that we are blind to what God is saying. I, I spoke to Doc a little bit earlier, and I said, I'm feeling some kind of way, and I can't explain what that some kind of way is. 
I know that there's something going on in the natural and the spiritual, and it's just not panning out. I do know that during our political time where we're getting ready to vote for another leader in the United States of America, it's just all for all the rhetoric that is being put on the world news. But we better pay attention, my friends, and we better look because it's a distraction that is happening for something greater that is happening and that will be presented behind the scenes. So I say to you, leaders, I say to you, followers of Jesus Christ, I say to you, people of other religions or whatever, whatever you do, we need to pray. We need to pray, not for a change, because the Word of God in the Holy Scriptures in the King James Bible or Christian Bibles, the Word is being fulfilled. These things shall happen. I'm not saying pray that these things will not happen because we cannot change the Word of God. But what I'm saying is pray for your safety. Pray for your souls. Pray that your spirit will be free in Jesus Christ. Pray that your spirit will find its freedom in whatever you believe in because we are living in perilous times. I would love to teach or preach a real happy, joyful message but I would be lying to you and to myself right now, or I will be forcing an untruth on you. And the Holy Spirit wouldn't like that very much because he says in the Word that there is a warning before a fall. And if he gives the watchman a word or a warning to his people and it is not presented, well, when the warning comes, and the watchman does not or has not presented the warning to the people, the blood would be on the watchman's hand. But if the watchman gives the warning or sounds the horn that God is calling out to his people and they do not listen, then the blood would not be on the watchman's hand. The blood would be on that or those individuals. So I'm sounding the horn this morning as a representative and a watchman of God. There is a judgment that is coming up on the land, the whole world. Why? Because we are off course. What do you mean we are off course? What I mean is that we are standing in a place of disobedience to the word of God. As I do look at the world news, as I observe the church houses and religion, and I'm going to even say I, I, I'm an observer. Um, the holiday that the Muslims just come out of, it's their holy day. And I'm in places where they are. And, and this just, I think, with all people, they are not true to what they say they believe in and what they fight for, for their religion, for their belief. I see Christians disobeying the word of God. I see Muslims disobeying what their religion calls for. What I truly see is the work in the hand of Satan the devil all upon the land. But why? Because it is the appointed time. And the only thing that I can say Christians can do is go to your scriptures, the word of God, that sincere leaders of God have been crying out to you for years, and I'm going to say again, ever since WCUW have been on the airwaves, 
We've been trying to bring the loss to the cross. We have been working in the vineyard. The laborers are truly few. What have you done for your master lately? What have you done for Jesus Christ lately? The laborers are few, and they began to get weary. So many of them are falling away from their position, falling away from the work that they said unto the Lord that they would do. And that's the reason I'm standing where I'm standing now, just waiting on the Lord for my next assignment. Or standing like an olive tree that's planted by the rivers of water and saying, and won't be moved until the Lord say move. I will continue. I was thinking about what have I done in the vineyard lately? And what am I doing in my life as a laborer, and I began to write a few things down. What I've done since the last time that I was on the air last week, I've come to the end of coordinating a wedding, a wedding that was in holy matrimony between a man and a woman. And as the ceremony was going on, I visualized the bridegroom coming back for his people. It was a beautiful day on Sunday when this wedding occurred. And I remember when the wedding planning started in July. And the only thing that I had to work for as being a coordinator was colors. Not knowing what the flowers were going to be. A bride without a bouquet is incomplete in a wedding ceremony. And at the end, just starting with the colors, what a beautiful arrangement was made. What came to my mind was that years ago, the Lord told me to begin to prepare for the bridegroom and to pass out wedding invitations. And I was told that God don't need you to do that. Well, yes, God did. Because he's saying to me, pass out the invitation, remind the people of his word. And that's just what I've done. But somehow it has become clouded. Is it that Jesus has been gone too long and people don't believe that he is anymore? People read the Bible. People go to Bible study. But do people really understand that word? The word of God says line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Deuteronomy even 29 even tells us that God will reveal his secret things to his children, their children, so we will, will do all of the words of the law. But I'm looking and I'm seeking. I'm not saying that it's not happening, but I have been moving around and been in a lot of places and the road is very narrow. But the road to destruction is wide, as the Word of God tells us, and many follow their end. Well, what is your point, Francis? What I'm saying is my job is to share the Word of God with his souls. And I see the rejection of the Word of God in the souls of mankind. And it grieves my spirit. And for my spirit to be grieved, the Holy Ghost has to be grieved. And if the Holy Ghost spirit is grieved, and he warns us not to grieve the Holy Ghost, but there's no forgiveness for that. And if the Holy Ghost is grieved and you are, have a, or you are with the Lord and have a sincere relationship with him, you can feel what he feels. And if the Holy Ghost is grieved, that means the Father in heaven is grieved. And it lets us know that, yes, we are in perilous times and we are embarking upon the end of this generation. I didn't say that I knew what time all of these occurrences were going to happen, 
But you can please believe if you look in society and in the word in the world and you pick up your holy scriptures, you will know by your spirit, the spirit that God has put in you, that these times are upon us. And I find that most Christian people have so much fear in them until God can't use them. We have taught over the last year that God is our strength. God is our provider. God is our pavilion, meaning Christian people, people who proclaim Jesus Christ with sincerity. Now, there are a lot of people who affiliate themselves in the Christian body, but they are not living at all. What people say is that I'm a Christian, but I'm not practicing. If you're a Christian and you're not practicing, let me be the first to tell you you're not a Christian. I was speaking with a bishop on yesterday, and we were talking about the Word of God, and I was just appalled at the things that came out of his mouth, which was not of God, but is being taught of God. <clears throat> People would say, Francis, be just a little bit <clears throat> careful where you walk. No, I don't have to be careful where I walk because I'm walking after the light. And the Word of God tells us to beware of wolves in sheep clothing. He says, beware of the Sadducees and the Pharisees to wear long robes. I'm going to say, beware of the Sadducees and the Pharisees that are in fancy suits. God tells us it is a command and an instruction to have the words of the Holy Scripture imprinted upon your heart. As a matter of fact, they are already imprinted upon your heart. He says, seek and ye shall find. And as you study your word, it will be revealed to you, as in Deuteronomy 29, line upon line, precept upon precept, and you will know this happens so that God is protecting you. Even when you're in a world of hopelessness, you will not be hopeless. I didn't say you wouldn't be weary because weariness is seeing things that are that shouldn't be. Because we don't take advantage of the promises of God, we will not seek them out. We're tossed and driven. We're hopeless. We began to take our lives. We began to take the lives of others carelessly for no apparent reason. It lets me know that the way of the Antichrist is being paved, just as John the Baptist paved the way for Jesus Christ. Remember, God is a God of opposites, and the opposites are happening. When the way of Jesus Christ was being paid, <clears throat> it was the good news. It was promises of joy, promises of hope, promises of prosperity, promises of good health. But what we are seeing now is the total opposite. Does it bother anyone? <clears throat> Does it stir your spirit or your soul? Are you truly committed and meditate upon the word of God? He will bring the things that were given to us by Jesus Christ to our mind to let us see where we are in time and what we're supposed to do in the Word. You know, the matter, the truth of the matter is that we don't study this Word in sincerity. Part of your tithing is giving God one-tenth of your 24 hours a day. You don't really expect for me to do that. No, I don't expect for you to do anything, but does God expect for you to do it? Yes, because he said, meditate on me daily. He says, study to show thyself approval. How can he show you a thing through the Holy Ghost that will happen before it happens 
if you don't have that relationship with him, if you don't meditate upon him? Are we growing in the statue of Jesus Christ? It does not appear so. Some of you may not want to be chastised, but this is just what the Lord has in my spirit and in my heart. He did not give me any teachings today. He did not give me any word, other word to give. The Lord wants you to know how he's feeling. He is disappointed in his leadership. He is disappointed in his people. Because we are not representing Jesus. Whenever you hear the news, whenever <clears throat> you are out in a conver uh, conversation with people, out in the public, and if you speak the name Jesus, if eyes could kill, and everyone wants to run to God, he says in prayer when a tragedy happens, he says, why should I listen to you? You don't call upon me when there's no tragedies going on. You have forgotten about me. I don't feel the same love that I'm giving you coming back to me. God has feelings. He's not a man, but for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That means you're supposed to have a relationship with him. God is not dead. He is a living God. He is a consuming fire. He keeps that fire on always so that you can reach him. You can see that light. You don't need me over the radio to tell you who God is and where God is because He's within every one of us. He wants to communicate with you. He wants to speak with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to make things better in your life. If you follow his instructions, if you love him, you would feed his sheep his word, the bread of life. And if the leadership felt the people the word of God, which is the bread of life, they would feed it to their families and to their children and to their guests and to their employees. But we have cut him out and off because we are entering into the time of the Antichrist. And no one wants to talk about it. Everybody want to pray it away. Everybody want to push it aside. I'm going to say it is in your face. And it is not going anywhere. And Lord have mercy upon the souls of man because we are not, we are not people, we are not in the place that we should be with God. This is a warning to you this morning from God. And it's an individual journey that each and every last one of us is on. I am going to do everything I possibly can to protect my own soul. And that's your duty too. The old people say you can take a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. I can teach and preach until Jesus comes, but I cannot make another individual, my family, my loved ones, the church members, do nothing because God gave you choice. And each and every last one of us have an individual choice. What are you doing with your spiritual choice? We're still trying to work like Hebrew slaves to make ourselves known among men upon the earth. Well, life does not begin or end on the planet earth in your society. People come to America and their families say they are westernized, meaning they forget their morals and their standards. Some parents from other cultures that come to America have killed their children because of the immoral acts that they do. God sees and knows all. 
I have people calling me all of the time. And they want to know what to do because a family member is being molested. A child is being molested. And they've turned it into social human services and nothing has been done. It is tearing up families. They're requesting prayers. I was talking about what I've done since the last time we've been on the air. Besides coordinating a wedding, I've been counseling with spiritual leaders. I've been donating finances for a worthy cause. And on that note, a young minister who's right now caught up in Tallapoosa, Georgia, His vehicle broke down, and he needs eight hundred dollar vehicle fixed so that he can continue on his journey. And I was called for a donation. I took my cell phone and I asked for every church in that area within a fifteen mile radius, which went into some other little cities. I only had one response, meaning no one answered the telephone at a church between when I was calling between the hours of 2 to 5 o'clock. I got one church, and um, I even told a lady, she said, well, you have to call back Sunday and see, can we help? I said, I'm going to tell the Lord on you people down south. She said, yeah, I know. And then I had one other call. They took information. I don't know if they contact him or not. Where is the help for the brethren? We're supposed to be the brotherhood. We're so worried about what we don't have and what we can't do. The Lord said the earth is his and the fullness thereof, and my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. We don't have the faith in God to put our hands in our handbag or in our pocket to help a fellow brothering in the Lord when they're in a crisis. That kind of just blew my mind. Maybe that's not the reason I'm feeling some kind of way. I prayed for the sick. Even last night, for healing, trusting and believing that God was healed. But you know what was so, I guess, nerve wracking to me? I couldn't find too many people to pray with me for a serious healing. The Word of God says, We're two or three gathered together in my name. I will be in the midst. Now, you can find a lot of people who will pray with you, but are they the kind of people who can intercede, who, whose life is in a place where you can fight between the warfare of that which is hap happening in the second heaven to get to the third heaven? Spiritual warfare is serious. Life is serious. We deal with what we see on the surface. But what I've been trying to reveal to God's people from a message to the Holy Ghost, you're living in two worlds, and both worlds are activated. The physical world that we're in and the spirit world that we're in. And somehow we can't even deal with the one that we find in the natural I've been exalting Christians. We don't exalt each other. We pull each other down. We leave each other hanging. I guess that's what the disciples did to Jesus when he asked them to just pray for an hour with them, and they couldn't stay up to pray for an hour. We can't find an hour to go in spirit and truth. We have this thing so down packed that we can just do it. But there is no anointing upon it. Some people say, oh, well, I beg you to differ. I can hear 
them, the ones who are even listening. But you know something? The Lord is saying to you, I beg you to differ because I see everything. I don't slumber. I don't sleep. And I'm the only one that knows the Lord saying the heart of man. You know, I can just imagine how Noah feel, felt when he was building that ark, talking about rain, and telling people, this is my assignment from God. God said, build this ark because it's going to rain. And they didn't believe him. And they laughed at him because it had never rained before. And what I'm telling you now, what makes it seem like Jesus has never been here before in our time. People don't believe that Jesus is going to return. They don't believe that he is, although they say that he is. And if they did believe, says the Holy Ghost, that he is, why are you not following my commandments? The proof is in the pudding. We all have come short of his glory, but we don't have to. We don't have to remain in that place. I can hear Jesus saying, O ye of little faith. You know, the word of God says rebuke, and the Lord says he chastened those who he loved. Well, that's what God is doing to us. I'm not excluding myself. He's chastening us. He's letting us know what we're not doing, just like a father would do who loves his children. And he's rebuking his leaders once again because no matter what you think you're doing and you're looking and calling up summons to let's see what we can do to bring the people back together because you have scattered them by not feeding them the truth, God said he's going to take his sheep out of their pastor. Where is the prosperity that you promised God's people, he says. He says he's the only someone who can give prosperity and good health. What the leaders have done has become their own gods in their own right and have led God's people astray. And God says there will be retribution. O ye of little faith. What have you done in the vineyard for the Lord? You know, we got jigging on Janet Jackson when she said, what have you done for me lately? Well, the Lord said the same thing. What have you done for him lately? The word of God tells us in end times, people will become lovers of them own, of, them, of their own selves. And that's what's happening. We love ourselves so much and we are selfish and we do for self, we will not reach out to others. We don't have time for the elderly. We don't visit them. Some pastors don't go to the hospitals and pray for their own members. They don't visit the fatherless and the widow. These are just things God told us to do for fellow man. And how can you Say that you love me and you don't love your brother. I'm just pulling some things out of the book to remind us just how much we out of, we're out of order. We have wandered into darkness so much until we've learned to feel around and we think that we're doing the will of God and we're doing our own will or we are following the path of Satan the devil. You wonder why people are killing themselves? They don't have anyone to go to. They have nothing to believe in. You tell them to go to God, you can't tell a babe to go to God when they don't know how. I've heard so many Christian leaders tell people what to do, but they've never told them how to accomplish it. And you know, when I do what the Lord tells me to do, to tell people how to accomplish it, what he says do, because I prayed many years to ask God, Lord, give me the answers to tell your people. They shut me off. They cut me down. They don't want to hear it. I just imagine Jesus going the crucified way. 
But he said, those who follow him, you will be persecuted for his name's sake. He says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. So, you know, maybe, Doc, I should just do me a happy dance right now. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And you guys can't see me, but I, I holy dance. And I'm standing here right now. I might give out a breath in a second. I am doing a holy dance. And maybe that's what I need to free my spirit. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is the reward of the overcomer, of the overcoming, if you continue on your journey. It's okay to pray. It's okay to be a peculiar person. Because God said there were going to be some. If you're not peculiar, if you're not indifferent, if you are walking a different way from society, you're not a Christian. You're not a true believer. And the word of God tells us that either you're of him or you're of Satan the devil, and there is no gray space. He said, either you're hot or cold. He said, if you're lukewarm, he will spew you out. You know, these things that the Lord has shared with us, you know, it should make some of us tremble. And what's so ironic about this whole thing, even the demons tremble, but we don't. How about that? The demons tremble, and we are bold. Because we have allowed the spirit, our lucific nature, to come and possess our very soul. There are only two spirits that can possess you. That is the Holy Ghost spirit of the living God or the unholy spirit of Satan the devil. Now, either you're walking in one of the two. And when you look at society... <clears throat> Who's holy? Do people know what holiness is of God? No one wants to reckon with holiness. People are changing it. And society are following their idols. They're doing what mankind says. Do. I'm saying stop, halt, take a look at it for yourself. And see what direction you're going in. It is unpopular but in, the, in society, but in the end, you will win. Because it doesn't start or end here. Can I, can I say it again? It doesn't start or end here. And if you're doing what everybody else is doing, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And you know something? If someone's listening, your heart and your spirit knows what I'm saying is true because it is the word of God. And supernaturally or in the spirit, you would get an unction. <laughs> your spirit knows when the truth is being told, whether your flesh likes it or not. And that's what I'm here today. I'm here to get on your flesh's nerve. And I didn't join this. Christian ban for popularity. I don't need popularity. I just need to get into the kingdom of God. That's the only thing I need right now because God has provided all of my needs here on earth. If you just do as he say, he'll provide for you too. We think we should have more than what we have. You don't need all of that. You just need just your measure. Greed is one of the seven deadly sins. You don't need all of everything that you think you need just to impress people. I just wish you just take a little time and just meditate. Go in spirit and truth. Ask the Holy Ghost to help you how to do it. To help you know how to do it. I wish I had more time. I wish I was in a different setting where I could truly teach and talk to the people with the Bible right there. 
I'm just sharing with you. I'm not doing a real teaching. I was thinking the other day, I really wish I could go into my calling with the people of God. Because when you do, his presence comes into the room. The anointing comes. And when the anointing comes, it's just saying that I'm here and I approve. It will touch your spirit and it will touch your soul and you will begin to weep sometimes. It's something about the word of God that moves your living man, your very interman. Your spirit will connect with the spirit of God and you will know within your knower that this is real and this is true. This is what my hope and my prayer is for all Christian people, or for whosoever will that chooses to come, to know him for yourself, to know him personally, and to have that desire, and to have that will by merging your will into his will, and following the Holy Ghost, so that you can experience him. The greatest thing in life, this life, is to experience experience the creator while you are yet here. It's a better feeling than any drug. It's a better feeling than silver and gold. It is a better feeling than having a bank account full of money. To experience the living God, the power of the living God. There is power in the name Jesus. That's the reason the world hates Jesus, because the world wants to be in power. They want to be in control. Let me tell you, mankind is not in control of the world, because the world does not belong to them. I like to say contrary to what they think. I'm telling you the truth. And anyone that interferes with their plan, the Illuminati, they want to get rid of you. It is said now that a lie is the truth. That's a lie. The truth is the truth. And the truth cannot be tampered with unless you allow it to be tampered with in your life. I tell you the truth. I come straight from the word of God, from the throne of grace, and tell you the truth. Stop being hoodwinked by the world. Think about your own soul, where you want to spend eternity, because it's on you. Whoever I'm talking to out here today, know what I'm talking about. I am not talking to anyone that is ignorant who don't know who's confused, I'm just talking to disobedient souls. Thus says the Lord God. And you have a choice because he's given it to you to fall in line. There's some little simple things, prophesying, some little simple things that God has asked some of you to do, and you refuse to do it. Shame on you. Because it's holding up that blessing that you've been on your knees praying for, and you are your own worst enemy. Some of the situations consider life or death in the natural and the spirit, and you are in control of it, and you want to sit and wait for God to do something. God has always been there. Why don't you get up? and do what you know you are supposed to do for your own sake to make your life better and to begin to build on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. Pastor, let me tell you another thing. There are so many young men between the ages of 25 and 40 that has looked up to you to teach them how to be ministers of God, and you have failed them. God is going to get you. God is going to show you what you've shown him. Everybody say, oh, God is good. God is good. But did you forget? God's wrath 
is as terrible as his goodness is good. And when the wrath of God, which is judgment, comes upon us, the first thing you want to do is call somebody to pray for you. Well, it's not going to happen. Somebody will pray, but God is not going to hear it. The word of God tells you in Hebrews and in Romans that those who were once in righteousness and have gone into unrighteousness, he says he's going to turn you to a reprobate. And in Hebrews, he says that there is no repentance for you. Now, if you're struggling with something and you feel like you're losing your mind, it's because the wrath of God is upon you. God has passed judgment on you because your cup of unrighteousness has flown over. He told you that he sees everything. He says he's omnipotent. He says he doesn't slumber and sleep or nor sleep. And what's happening to you is the judgment of God is upon you. If you was wondering what's going on, I'm telling you what thus says the Lord. He says my judgment is upon you, his people. Same thing happened to Israel, the spiritual Israel, those in the Old Testament. It's it's just recycling itself. You would think that somebody would have common sense enough to understand the word of God and to obey. The whole word is about obeying. But he did give you a choice. Well, my time is almost up, and I can feel the spirit subsiding. And, I, you know, I guess he says, no guessing. See, he's talking to me, too. He said, you've done what I told you to do, and there is no excuse for it, and I don't apologize for it. I feel like sometimes you just read the Bible and share what's in the Word of God, and people hear it and they don't hear it. God wants obedience. He truly wants to bless you, but he cannot bless you if you're you're disobedient to his word. And you can seek this word, and the Holy Ghost will come and be your teacher. He is your guide. He's the lamp for the light. And the light has already brought the way and gone and is in a place to prepare for you so that When he do what the rain did, it came. (laughs) And Noah was ready. Just eight folk was ready. And the Bible says that there's nothing new in the sun. Do you think it would just be eight people? Just a question. With humor. Do you think just eight people are going to be saved when Jesus returns? It's up to you. But I pray, God, that he would keep me in the place that I am, that I would be one of those people who see his face. That's what my desire is. What's yours? But until we meet again, think about some of these things. Get so angry with yourself until you change yourself. Quit being disobedient to God and be obedient. Because you're the one that has to stand before God in judgment just like I do. I think about these things, and they concern me. And I want to please him and show him that I love him, just like he showed us that he was our first love. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'd like to thank you for this day. I'd like to thank you for the hour that has just passed. I'd like to thank you for the rest of the day and for all of those who tuned in and heard. I even thank you for the technical difficulties in everyone's life, that they would just search their souls and ask the question to you, Lord God, what is it that I must do to be saved? And that answer is to obey my word. To the leaders in this prayer, I hear the Lord saying, if you love me, as he told Peter, Feed my sheep. Well, thank you for answers. Thank you for revelation. Thank you for rebuke. Thank you for remembrance. 
All of those things you've given to us this hour. And I know, Lord God, you were speaking to me as you were speaking to the listeners. So I bless your holy name. And, Lord, I will never forget all of your benefits. I seek ye first the kingdom of God and, Lord God, your righteousness. And you said all of these things, your truth, your promises, will be added unto us. So, Lord God, until we meet again, keep us, bless us, and protect us from all evil. These are our prayers and requests. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. And will the church say amen with me? God bless.